Today we're going to be looking at the 2019 December Silver Question meetings. So in this question, we're going to have a one-dimensional number line with two barns on either side. So there are going to be n cows going towards either the left barn or the right barn. And every now and then, if two cows bump into each other, they're going to collide. And what's going to happen is they're going to turn to the opposite direction. So what's going to happen is the cows are going to keep moving until they fall off into either barn. And what we want to know is we want to know the total number of collisions between pairs of cows within time t, where t is basically the time where, since every cow has a weight, half of the weight of the cows has fallen off. So let's go look at the algorithm for this question. So before we start on the actual algorithm for this question, there are a couple of observations we need to make. So the hardest, arguably hardest, part of the question would be collisions. And what we're actually going to realize, and this is really important, is that when we have our cows, the collisions between them actually aren't going to matter. So the way this is going to work is, let's just imagine this blue cow here, which is going to be traveling towards the left, is going to be wearing a top hat. And this red cow here is going to be traveling towards the right. So what's going to happen is, since they both move at the same speed, they're going to walk, and then they're going to meet at the middle. And what we're actually going to imagine is, when a collision happens, we're going to assume this top hat that originally was on the blue cow is going to move with the blue cow. And when they collide, it's going to keep moving and transfer on to the red cow. And the reason why this is important is from the perspective of the two cows, we had them move in and then they collided and then they moved out. But from the perspective of the top hat, we basically realized that its journey was moving here. And when the collision happened, because it switched cows, it just kept moving on. So what we're actually going to notice is that if we just assume instead of cows, we're just going to ignore weight for now, but instead of cows, if we imagine these top hats, what's actually going to happen is we don't care about collisions. These top hats are just going to keep moving on until they fall. So knowing this, for the rest of our program, until we have to actually calculate the number of collisions, we're just going to assume collisions don't exist. Our second main observation is going to be that if we have P cows facing the left and we have Q cows facing the right, if I have a line and I have three cows here, what we're actually going to make the observation of is we're going to notice that if we were simulating this and we have cow A, cow B, cow C, cow A and cow B, let's just say cow A is moving this way and cow B is moving this way. So even though cow B is moving to the left and cow A is moving to the right, what's actually going to happen when we run our program is the two are going to collide and cow A is going to move here and it's going to fall off the left. So this was if we were simulating. But obviously, since we're using top hats, we're not going to be able to simulate that out. So what we're actually going to notice is if I have cow A and cow B here, because cow A is closer to the edge, no matter what, cow A, no matter what direction cow A and cow B are facing, cow A is going to fall off the edge faster. Because if we were simulating, they're going to collide and cow A is going to end up falling there this, this way anyway. So until cow A falls off, there's no way for cow B to fall off through this edge. And what we can actually notice is because of the same exact reason that cow B can't fall off the left until cow A falls off, cow C isn't going to be able to fall off until cow B falls off. So what we're, I'm basically trying to say is if I have P cows facing left and Q cows facing right, the cows on the left side, no matter what cows they are, no matter what direction they're facing, the cows that are currently on the left side are going to fall off on the left side. And the Q cows that are on the right side are going to fall off on the right side. It doesn't matter what direction they're facing because we can assume this idea of top hats. We're just going to realize that P cows are going to fall off on the left side and Q cows are going to fall off on the right side. And not only P and Q cows, it's going to be the P cows closer to the left side and the Q cows closer to the right side. Again, the reason we know this is because we understand this property here that B can't fall off until A falls off because A is closer to the edge. 
so the P cows closer here are going to fall off. So now that we've made this observation, we're going to go on to how we're actually going to solve this question. So another hard part of the question is going to be the fact that we're only going to calculate the time of t, where the weight of the cows that have fallen off are going to be half the weight of the total cows. So what we're actually going to realize is when we do this, we're going to, just like we observed earlier, because the B cows on the left side fall off and the Q cows on the right side fall off, the time that every cow, or actually hat, is going to fall off, because we're assuming no collisions, is going to be its distance to the closest barn. So for the P cows here, we're going to basically realize that if I have a cow here, the time that it falls off is going to be the distance to the L, or just the location, and the weight is going to be its own weight. So what we actually know is, since we can calculate the distance from every cow to its corresponding barn, so even if, say, this was split in a way where P is really small here and Q is really small here, this cow here, the distance is going to be the distance here, and the weight is just the weight of the cow. And what we're actually going to do is, in order to calculate the total time that we're going to be allowed, we're basically going to have our two sides, and what we're going to do is we're just going to create a list. And this list is going to be of pairs, or tuples, and the first value is going to be the time it takes for the cow to fall off. And it's really important to note that the cows are all going to be moving at a speed of 1. Their weight doesn't matter right now, but they're all going to be moving at a speed of 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through these cows, and then we're going to push them into a list where we have their distance. Because, because they have a speed of 1, their distance and their time are going to be the same. And then the second value is just going to be their weight. And what we're going to do is we're going to push all of the cows here, push all of the cows here, and then we're going to sort them by their distance. So by sorting them by their distance, we don't care which direction they're going. All we care about is we care that they're the time that they have, and we care about the weight. And what we're going to do is we're going to loop through this list, and we're just going to keep looping, and we're going to hold a variable, say w, and we're going to keep adding the weight of the cows with the smallest time. So we've sorted them from smallest to greatest time or distance. And then we're going to assign the value or assign the value of t, our final time, to the distance or the time of the last value where we are able to satisfy it. So I'll show you more of this in the code. So let's look at the next main part. So over here, step three, we've basically been able to find the time that it takes. We found t. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find collisions. So this is our third main observation. So first of all, we know that if two cows, again, we're assuming top hats, no collisions whatsoever. If two cows are both moving towards the left, they're never going to end up intersecting. They're never going to collide. So what we're actually going to do is, in order to count the number of collisions, we're going to basically see, for every cow going towards the left, and since this is symmetrical, we can loop through the right cows instead, but for every, we're going to loop through, and we're going to check for every cow facing towards the left, we're going to find the number of cows facing towards the right, so that the distance between them is less than or equal to 2 times t. And it's important to note we're doing 2 times t because since both of their speeds are 1 and they're moving towards each other, their total speed together is going to be 2 times t. And the way you can do this is you can just do two binary searches or in C++, upper bound or lower bound. And you're just going to, when we read in the input, we're going to basically have two lists, the left facing cows and the right facing cows. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a binary search since we're looping through the left, we're going to do a binary search on the right facing cows with two values, either the distance between them is 0 or the distance between them is 2 times t. And the collisions are just going to be the number of cows in between. And then we're just going to add up all of the collisions together. 
So we're going to binary search on distance zero or just the this cap by itself. And then we're going to binary search on distance two times t. So I'll show you more of this in detail in the code. But the most important thing to notice is that when we have the kind of top hat analogy, collisions are not going to matter. And the other thing is going to be the cows that are going to be falling off, their weights are going to be literally the cows on the left side and the right side. So again, the weights of the cows that we're calculating when we calculate the time here, they're not going to be the weights of the cows facing left or facing right. They're just going to be the cows on the left side and on the right side for this property that we described here. And then at the end, we're going to count the collisions using our two binary searches. So let's go look at the code for this question. So I've set up our program a bit here. Uh, the two main things you should know is we have defined f and s as first and second. So anytime you see dot f and dot s, it just means dot first or dot second. And then the other thing we're going to note is because we're going to be reading the input in with three main values, I'm going to use a struct called cow. So the three values I'm going to have is the x or the location, the d or the direction, and then the w or the weight. So notice again that we're going to be using the x for the time too. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read in the input. So I'm going to have our vector of the structure cow, and then I'm going to read in the values, and I'm going to sort them by their location. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move on to the first part of the program, or finding time. So I'm going to create my function called find time. And what we're basically going to do is we're going to split our cows first into left and right. So we're going to iterate through cows. And we're going to check if the direction is negative 1, we're going to push it into left facing cows. Otherwise, we're going to push them into right facing cows. So I want to point out that this isn't the P and Q we split them up into earlier in the algorithm described. This is just the cows that are facing left and facing right. We're going to do the directions later in a vector called final, but right now these are just the cows that are facing left and facing right. So we're going to push back their time. And the important thing to note is their time are going to be different depending on whether or not they're facing left or facing right. So the time of this one is going to be cows i x, and this one is just going to be the final location or the right barn minus cows i x. So there's an important clarification I have to make here, which is that the p and the q I mentioned inside of the algorithm are going to be the weight. So the time is going to be the time of the left and right cows, but the weight is going to be the weight of the cows on the left and right side. So what we're going to do is we're going to push back the time of the left and right cows, and what we're going to do is the weight is going to be the weight of the cows on the left side and on the right side. So the cows on the left side are just going to be, since we already sorted it, cows i dot w, and this one is just going to be continuing on, so we're going to add the size of left cows, and then we're going to add i for the right side cow weights. And so what I've basically done here is I've created a list called final, and this final list is going to contain all of the cows and a their time and b their weight. So their time, again, is going to be the time of the cows that are facing in a certain direction, and their weight is going to be the weight of the cows at the physical location starting. So to recap, the basic idea here is we're going to follow the top hat, and then the time is going to be the time for this top hat, the top hat of the cow, to move towards the left or to the right. But the actual cow wearing the top hat at the very end is going to be the cow that started in the physical location of either the left or the right side. So our time is going to be the time of the cows that are facing in a direction. It's going to be the time of their hats. But the actual cow that is going to be wearing that hat, and therefore the weight, is going to be the cows that started at the very left or the very right. And what we're going to do is we're going to sort them. So over here, whether or not you're facing left or right, it doesn't matter. So we're going to sort them by the time it takes. And the reason why we do this is because the next part is finding the time. So what we're going to do is we're going to first find the total weight of the cows. And once we found the total weight of the cows, 
we're going to then loop through again and we're just going to do a very simple if where we're going to have current and we're going to add final j dot s so we're going to add the weight of a cow we're going to check whether or not the weight of the cow is half or greater than half and if it is greater than half we're going to return the current time so this is just as we described earlier and then at the very end i'm just going to return zero so what we've basically done here is we've found the time of the cow and that's pretty much the hardest part and the next thing we're going to find is we're going to find the actual number of collisions so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to make left and right cows again and this time we're just going to do the same thing and we're going to actually go into the second part of the program and over here I've used C++ which has lower bound but if you were doing this normally just replace this lower bound if you're using Java or something replace lower bound with your binary search so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two values end and start and so again we're going to have these two values and so what we're actually going to do is we're going to find the range of the cows that this current cow in the left cow, so this current I cow, is going to collide to. So the end is going to be just the value of left cow's I. So this is going to be the first one. And then the start is going to be left cow's I minus 2 times time. And so what we're basically doing here is we're basically saying I'm going to collide with the cows that are in the range of from my own time and two times time because we're going to be moving towards each other. And at the very end, we're just going to add the number of cows here to the total number of collisions. At the end, we're just going to output our collisions. So what we've basically done in this program is we found the time by creating this final and by using these times and basically adding them together using the time of the cow top hat and the weight of the cows at P and Q or at the left and right sides. And then we've found the time and using this time, we're basically going to count the number of collisions by looping through the left cows. And when we loop through, we're gonna use two binary searches that are gonna find the times of both the greatest cow that we're gonna collide with or the current time that I have myself and the smallest cow that we're going to collide with, or the current time minus two times the value of t. And then we're going to add all of the collisions together and output the total number of collisions we get. And that's the end of our program.